joining us today, Charlie. Um, it's really great to have you here. Um, we're just wanting to get to know you a bit better and uh, hear about your story. Um, so we, for those of you, for those of us listening um, and watching on who don't know you, could you maybe just give us a little bit about yourself? That'd be great. Yeah, so I grew up in Glasgow, um, Glasgow born and raised. I attend a school in the West End. Um, I was raised atheist, um, however, I went to a Christian school. Um, the school, it wasn't super Christian. Uh, we had religious assembly every so often and we'd have religious um, education occasionally as well. Um, so growing up, I had a little bit of a Christian background and then I kind of forgot about things for quite a long time after school and I started studying um, Scotland's Rural College. I did wildlife conservation um, and that's me graduated now and I'm about to start working on the Isle of Mull. Wow, beautiful. I love yeah. Mull. That's great. So when, thinking back to when you were a child, what were your, did you have, can you remember what sort of things you thought about uh, God or did you have any ideas about Christianity as like when you were younger? That you can remember? Yeah, so um, I don't think I was ever discouraged from learning about Christianity or about God or about Jesus. Um, it was always particularly the morals and the values that are taught in a lot of the Christian stories. I think a lot of people around me, they thought that those were quite important. Mm. And so I did learn about a lot of the Christian stories and about like the life of Jesus. Um, although... I think my parents were always quite concerned about things feeling, um, I want to say quite culty, mm, but like yeah. Um, uh, quite, yeah, they didn't want me to get too like sucked into things mm. and get like too involved. Um, but so I never had a, it was never particularly a negative view. It was, it was a very neutral view that I had of Christianity mm. growing up. Um, so I understood that like, there was a lot of good things in it, but also that there was potentially dangerous sides to it as well. Mm. Um, so I was a little bit cautious growing up of it. Um, but I, again, like having read the stories, I thought that they were really interesting stories. And again, like the morals and what was being taught in them, I thought they were really important points. And I wanted to be able to like live those those morals and values as I was growing up, mm. um, even though it might not have been from a Christ-centered point of view. Yeah. And so did that continue into high school? Like, did, yeah, did that sort of belief or understanding continue into, yeah, um, secondary? Sort of, yeah. So again, like all of the things about being kind to your neighbor and loving one another and being patient and being civil and wise and like speaking with tact and whatnot, I tried to take all of those going through um, into high school. However, again, as you know, like growing up and becoming a teenager, you want to have that independence and you start looking into your own, your own ways of thinking and what was very prevalent at the time, at least amongst my friend group, was um, a lot of the ideas about gender and sexuality and kind of like pushing those boundaries and pushing the binary and really exploring outside what is like the norm. And that kind of led me down quite a slippery slope of thinking that I was transgender. And um, so originally I was born, my name at birth was Firth, and then I changed my name to Charlie later on when I was about 15, 16. And um, yeah, like when, when I went on the internet and I was Googling things like, oh, I'm questioning my gender, like everything you came across was just, you're transgender, you're going to have to get surgery, that's it, there's no other option for you pretty much. And so like, reading that, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's that sorted. Um, wow. Guess I must be trans. Um, start, start looking into like going to my GP and talking to them about things, start looking at getting an appointment for, for gender counselling. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was very, it was quite a quick um, kind of process once I started questioning things really. And that was definitely kind of the first time that I probably strayed away from those more traditional kind of Christian values, even though I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was raised Christian. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until I left school and I was able, I took a year out between school and university and really just that being able to be by myself and not have all these other influences mm -hmm. from my peers was what allowed me to just kind of realize and go, 
oh, I guess I'm probably not transgender. And I felt mm. really quite angry and quite disillusioned by the fact that everything on the internet just said you're trans, that's it, there's no other option. Um, and so from there, I started um, looking into more kind of political speakers, people on the right wing, um, looking at their opinions on gender and sexuality. And I found that I agreed much more with what they were saying. Like a lot of their points were very logical, it was very straightforward, it made a lot of sense. Um, looking at the idea that a woman is a woman, like if you've got XX chromosomes, then that's it. And that's kind of like, I was like, okay, there's a very clear defined line. Like there's no kind of gray areas of, oh, it's what I say it is kind of thing. Which is, I think it's a lot of nonsense now. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but and when you're sorry. growing up, when you were going through those questioning mm-hmm. and you're changing your name to Charlie, mm-hmm. was there anybody or did you hear any other voices that were saying, oh, actually... No, that that's not you. You weren't exposed to any of that. Um, not no. really. Like people would be like, oh, "Are you sure?" Mm. Um, and I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure." And they'd be like, "Okay, that's fine then." Okay, so, they're just very accepting, yeah. very affirming. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like I'd never met any obstacles right. against yeah. anything. Like mm. when I was when I was questioning things at all. Um, yeah. Like it was <laughs> like everyone was just super super accepting of it. Um, so it wasn't until yeah. you were then after. Yeah, after uni, after school, and you're yeah, like kind of uh-huh. just be able to take some time to myself and just be able to think about things by myself, and particularly because I went traveling, and each time I went to a different country, I was able to almost kind of completely reinvent myself. Like nobody knew who I was going into each situation, and so I was kind of able to play out different versions of myself almost um, yeah. without any prior expectation of who I am and how I act. Yeah, and that allowed me to kind of rediscover myself again in a way um so that was very liberating it's very liberating yeah great and so um what was it you were listening to at that time that was it something you heard then after your school that made you start investigating christianity well i can't quite remember exactly how it was that i got listening to these podcasts and these political talkers um there was one company prageru i think quite a lot of people have heard of them um and that was probably one of the first ones I remember listening to and um yeah it was just kind of like listening to them I was like wow this makes so much more sense it's so much more logical um it's it's very clearly defined like there's no gray areas it's not um yeah it's not open to interpretation in any way and so that made me going okay these guys have got they're really quite knowledgeable they know what they're talking about they're very um they're very straight to the point with everything um and kind of as of the more I watched the more I realized that kind of the one correlating point between everyone is that they're all Christian right. or yeah. some of them were Jewish as well but yeah majority of them mm. were Christian and they looked up to the Christian God and they worship Christ and so I was thinking like well I may as well as have a look at it because I've always thought of myself as being quite a spiritual person. Um, I've always believed there is something greater than what we have on earth. I don't, I don't believe that this is just, <laughs> yeah. this is the be all and end all that we have here. Um, and so I just kind of figured, well, why, why not? Why yeah. not look into it a bit more? Um, and then that kind of took me down the path of just kind of like watching a couple of videos on YouTube. Um, I watched a lot of the Bible Project and their like summaries of each Bible uh, book and story. And again, I found it quite compelling. I found yeah. it really interesting. Um, and then it led me to wanting to then find a church in Glasgow. And I went to a couple of different places initially and I didn't feel as though they were quite a right fit for me. Um, and then at the time I was dating a boy and his granddad was a Christian. He's kind of like the only Christian that I properly knew at the time. Because wow. again, I'd kind yeah. of been raised in entirely atheist kind of household and society. And so we asked him where if he can recommend anyone in Glasgow. And he was based down in London. So he asked his church in London and they recommended the Tron. Okay. And so we came along and the first service, I really enjoyed it. I everything that was being spoken about you could see mm. exactly where in the bible it came from mm. again like all like the all the speakers that i've been listening to it was very straight to the point it was yeah. very logical it was very understandable 
Um, and it just seemed like it was exactly what I'd been looking for in terms of the actual teaching. Um, and then kind of just the more that I attended the church, I met more people. Mm. Um, and I really got to see just how incredible it is when Christ works through people um, and getting to like, yeah, seeing seeing so many people live their lives in a God-centered way was really, really inspirational. Um, and getting to see yeah Christ working through people and seeing how he works through people as well was really inspirational. So I think quite a lot of the time when, particularly growing up, when I've been speaking about Christianity, um, like again, all those morals and values are there, but then like people are saying like, oh, like Christ saved me, I was saved through Jesus. I'm thinking like, I don't know about that. It just yeah. sounds like a little bit crazy. But then <laughs> but then when you actually see people in church working and talking to each other and how they treat each other, you're like, wow, okay. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely, there's something much greater going on here. And it was really, really inspiring. Um, and that's kind of partly what, what inspired me so much to then want to devote my life to Christ and want to live my life for Christ, seeing how these people had been able to transform themselves. Yeah, well, yeah, and I guess you, you saw, like, God at work in them, didn't you? And mm -hmm. So what was it then, Charlie, that... So you're sitting in church listening to the sermons, um, meeting Christians, um, meeting with God's people on Sundays. Um, was it through something you'd heard? What was it that had... you? What was kind of... How did that happen then, coming to a place of faith in Christ? Yeah, so um, quite early on, I Eleanor um, Wilkinson picked me up and we'd had coffee together and she'd offered if I wanted to do some Bible study with her. And I said, absolutely, yes, I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, and we started going through the Gospel of John. This is terrible. I should have seen this before, <laughs> before I came out. But there is a verse in John's Gospel where um, Jesus is chatting and he says, if you believe everything that's written in the Old Testament and I'm written about in the Old Testament, why don't you believe what I'm saying and what I'm doing? And I'm like, well, that's kind of the position that I'm in just now. Like a lot of the morals and the ethics and the values of Christianity, I fully stand behind. But there's still a little bit of like, I'm not entirely sure if when Jesus say he died for our sins, if he actually died for our sins, then it was like, yeah, so it was that verse there that I was like, okay, well, yeah, it's written by the same God. So why would one book be more truthful than the other yeah. realistically? So yeah, so that's kind of where the main turning point of I, I want to be a Christian or I am a Christian yeah. came from. So you became convinced from what you'd read in scripture yeah. that actually it was true. Um, what um, difference has that made to your life, knowing that you are a sinner saved by grace? How has that changed your life? How has that changed your worldview? How you see, you know, motiv motivates you to do things or, you know? Yeah. I'm just, I'm so grateful every day. Um, really, really grateful to God and to Christ and to what they've done for me. Um, and that really inspires me to do, to do a lot of good things, just yeah just that gratitude and having that there has made a huge difference in my life like I think I used to take a lot of things for granted before um and I would be quite um I could almost expect a lot of things just to happen um and not yeah not show my gratitude for them and not have understanding of where they've come from um and also yeah, like how they say in the Bible, but how if you read the Bible and you learn the Bible and then you're able to live out the Bible more in your life, I've found that to be totally transformational. Um, I definitely notice when my personal Bible study has been lacking that like I myself am then also kind of lacking a bit more in life um, and that I won't be like as patient at times or I'd be a bit faster to react. Um, so yeah, just having, yeah, just the acting out, um, acting into my life in a way that honors God and um yeah just like shows the power of God and shows his magnificence through my actions yeah yeah so what what difference does it make trusting in Jesus Christ um when you're thinking about your future you're very young you're just about to go into a new job on the Isle of Mull yeah what difference does knowing Christ and living for him make oh it's such a privilege it, I can just knowing that Christ has my best intent at heart like he's got all my best intentions um I know that he's always looking out for me and that 
he'll give me exactly what I need and not necessarily what I want. Mm. Um, I know, yeah, I just feel, I feel very secure. I feel very secure in, in his love and in his power. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And um, as like someone who has had sort of maybe just questions about your sexuality, your gender, like how would you like want to encourage people who might be listening in who have maybe they're young they're maybe similar in your situation mm -hmm. um looking into these things and actually only hearing one side of the story what would you maybe say to some people who might be in that boat themselves um not everything the internet is true um unfortunately there's a lot of people on the internet who have their own agenda and they will they'll tell you that there's only one option that there's only one way to do things um that's not how it is at all taking having the patience and taking time to ask those around you about what they think how they feel that can be it can be a very very painful process hearing that because you're going to probably hear a lot of things that you don't want to hear but it's really really important um that you do seek these other opinions and also just praying as well um praying for guidance and uh, for guidance praying for for understanding um praying for patience and that's really important and just mm -hmm. yeah taking that, that time to to sit with your thoughts and your feelings and mm -hmm. Yeah, taking a long, you probably think that you've taken a long, hard think mm -hmm. over it. Um, like I spent maybe like five years thinking about this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lifelong thing. And you might feel as though like you think you know everything at this point in time, mm -hmm. but yeah, you don't, <laughs> unfortunately. And how has, has God's word helped with you to like help you understand what it means to be a woman? Because obviously like mm -hmm. the Bible has plenty to say about like the goodness of being female yeah. doesn't it I don't know yeah yeah totally totally I think there's so much in today's society that demonizes the both men and women mm -hmm. really um like women are told that like periods are like one of the worst pains they'll ever have in their entire life that it's horrible that being a stay-at-home mom is horrible that having kids is a waste of time all these kind of things and that like serving your husband's a waste of time and it's just it's so sad that these traits are all displayed as negative things mm. like whereas in the bible it shows you just how much joy you can get out of it how um how much it can learn and help you to grow um how much experience it gives you um and i think those are so such important things and it's really it's brought me a lot of joy actually be able to read the bible and seeing um, like stories of women that are really strong in faith and the incredible things that they've done for God and it really inspires me to want to be more like them and to be to take pride in my femininity as well yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. amazing that's wonderful well thank you so much Charlie for being able to share with us so openly and honestly it's really wonderful to see how God has worked in your life and brought you to a faith <laughs> place of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and I hope you have a wonderful time and when you go to the mall. Thank so you very much. Thanks so much. <laughs>